This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Bespoke Post. If you were naive and delusional enough to think that Donald Trump losing the 2020 election and having his social media accounts taken away was the end of the Trump era, uh, I hope you enjoyed the last like month and a half because as of this past weekend's Conservative Political Action Conference, or CPAC, that illusion is officially shattered. Yeah. Or canceled, if you will. <laughs> uh, since 1973, CPAC has basically been the unofficial annual convention of the Republican Party. It's like E3 for conservative dorks. Mm -hmm. But CPAC 2021 may as well have just changed its name to TrumpCon. For one thing, Trump was there headlining the event in his first public appearance and first speech since leaving the White House. And what a speech it was! And we'll get to that later. But first, let's talk about the convention itself. You might recall that last year's CPAC, which took place almost exactly a year ago, happened right as the coronavirus was really starting to spread in the U.S. Despite health officials urging basic precautions at the time, like avoiding handshakes and washing your hands frequently, very simple stuff. Or just not having big events. Yeah, yeah it, it was business as usual over there, and a lot of attendees were exposed to the virus. Luckily, it was still technically pre-pandemic, and uh, whatever presence COVID had at the event was small enough to not create a super spreader event. There was some worry for a couple days uh, that the president, Donald Trump, might have uh, directly been in contact with a guy who had the virus, but uh, it would take another like nine months yeah. you know, for yeah. it to get him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, fast forward to now, though, a year later, and uh, new cases, while definitely on the decline, are still way, way, way higher than last February. Mm -hmm. I mean, half a million people have fucking died. So... Why are they even having an in-person convention? And where is it even allowed for them to do this? So, despite holding the CPAC event at the D.C. area venue, the Gaylord National Resort for the last... Not uh, again! Uh, the, that simply wasn't possible this year due to coronavirus and all the regulations around mm -hmm. it. So, they moved the event down to Orlando, Florida, where anything goes. Yeah. Well, well okay, not quite, actually. Uh, even in Florida... Local ordinances still require mask wearing uh, at events like this. And um, yeah, you can take a big wild guess as to how that went over with this crowd. Well, as Dan mentioned, we are in a private facility um, and we do want to be respectful of the um, ordinances that they have as their private property. So please, everyone, when you're in the ballroom, when you're seated, you should still be wearing a mask. So if everybody can go ahead, work on that. I know, I, I know it's, it's not the most fun. You, you have the right. You have the right to set the own rules in your own house and we're borrowing somebody else's house. So we need to comply with their rules. So thank you all for putting on your masks. I wear a mask when I'm in the halls and we're gonna comply with their rules. Thank you, everyone. Have a good Thank conference. You. Yeah, I guess when you tell a group of people for an entire year that masks are tyranny and COVID is no worse than the common cold, getting those people to wear masks is a little tricky. Please. Uh, especially when official CPAC speakers are going off about how masks are dumb. Like, right as this is going. Yeah, here's Ted Cruz. Everybody can get immunized. We can have herd immunity everywhere, and we're going to wear masks for the next 300 years. And by the way, not just one mask, two, three, four. You can't have too many masks. How much virtue do you want to signal? This is just dumb. So you can sit at the table and there's no virus being transmitted. But if you stand up, put the mask on. In the immortal words of William Wallace, freedom! Freedom! <laughs> The anti-masker problem was apparently such a nuisance to CPAC's organizers that signs like this were posted throughout the convention floor. Repeat offenders of the mask policy will be asked to leave the premises. <laughs> America uncanceled? Question mark? Really? I don't know. I got, they, they won't let me walk around with my mask on. I feel a bit canceled by yeah. this policy. Anyways, in addition to lots of talk from speakers about how COVID is simultaneously no big deal and also Trump deserves credit for defeating it, a major theme at CPAC this year was, of course, cancel culture. Now, the official CPAC 2021 tagline on the website was America uncancelled. America uncancelled. Uh, these damn libs are silencing people for their opinions, and they can't keep getting away with it. It's just like thought crime from George Orwell's 1984. Yeah. Oh, wait, what's that? 
Oh, yeah, here's CPAC on Twitter a few days before the event. We have just learned that someone we invited to CPAC has expressed reprehensible views that have no home with our conference or our organization. The individual will not be participating at our conference. They, so they canceled someone? Yeah, this is awkward. I mean, literally, by definition, they canceled their yeah, appearance. Yeah, literally, <laughs> literal cancellation. Yeah, yeah uh, also, it's a very vague tweet. Like, uh, you're going to have to be a bit more specific, CPAC. Uh, did they say something racist? Or, I don't know, did they say something about how health care is a human right and the minimum wage should be raised or something yeah. like that? Because that be either say, one. That's not in line with your views either. Yeah. Uh, also, who are you even talking about? Okay, well, it turns out it was this guy, Young Pharaoh, who apparently has a long history of saying uh, very anti-Semitic shit. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, sorry, Young Pharaoh, your appearance at the anti-cancel culture rally has been canceled. Um... Not going to let the cognitive dissonance of that get in the way of having a great time this weekend, though. It'd be your own friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'd be your own friends sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, throughout CPAC, especially during panels about the election, various Trump-friendly news networks aired big disclaimers similar to the one that uh, One America News or OAN played before the My Pillow Guys election conspiracy movie. <laughs> uh, please, what we're what is about to happen? Might be complete bullshit. Uh, the, the My constant... favorite one was the uh, one some online only news network didn't have a written disclaimer ready, so they literally had to cut away from a, uh, a panel read like, it, yeah. as it was happening, just be like, "Hey guys, so like you know, we just want you to know that you you know form your own, do your own research." D Every uh, single time. It's do your own do research. Do your own research. Even if what we're saying says that the research you'll find by your bias will be wrong, mm -hmm. it's okay to do it on your own. Do your own research. Yeah. But the, if you read the full disclaimer, it, it basically alludes to the fact that if you do your own research and you have the bias that leads you to the research that you want to believe, that research might be wrong. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, I'm sure their lawyers rubber stamp that. Like, you're good. Just tell them to do their own research and then it's on them. But yeah, CPAC, it wasn't about to let it get a little bit of uh, cancel culture, get in the way of uh, their rants about cancel culture. Uh, here's Matt Gates doing a little bit of stand-up comedy about the fact that Mr. Potato Head is now non-binary or some shit. Look out, Mr. Potato Head. You're next. I, I'm sorry. I think now he's going by Potato X. Can't be Mr. Potato. And I, see, to me, the whole concept of the Mr. Potato Head was he could move the parts around. I mean, Mr. Potato Head was America's first transgender doll, and even he got canceled. And here's Don Jr. reacting to the fact that Disney Plus put a disclaimer in front of old episodes of The Muppet Show, essentially saying, Hey, just FYI, this shit aired 45 years ago, and some of it might, might not have aged great. They've banned The Muppets. Right? I mean... I mean, uh, hard... hard Hard to wrap one's head around the idea that The Muppet Show now being easier to watch than ever before equals cancellation, but uh, maybe it makes more sense on amphetamines. Or whatever they're giving him. Also, I, th he's having. I think th there might have been one, like two, but I, I know for a fact that one of the only episodes that was completely removed was because the special guest turned out to be a prolific pedophile. Yeah, the only yeah the only stuff they removed. I don't know about that one, but they they did remove some segments. But it's because they literally couldn't clear the rights to music and stuff. But other than that, you can watch the whole fucking series. I watched some today. It was great. Yeah, it's a great show. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Johnny Cash might play in front of a Confederate flag at some point, but uh, you know, <laughs> there, there was an entire TV show where guys drove around in a Confederate car, and everyone was like, "Those guys are cool." Yeah. So different times. Anyway. Let's get to the real highlights of CPAC, or uh, rather, TrumpCon, because mm -hmm. that's, you know, aside from the speeches and the panels, this was literally just Comic-Con for Trump fans. It was a sort of a hodge for uh, MAGA people. Mm -hmm. Did the crazy Christian pre preachers show up in front of this one, too, or is that, like, implied that it's, like, a safe... They're inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there was, of course, tons of... Great merch, Trump merch, just in case you somehow managed to go four years with loving Trump but not picking up a MAGA hat. Or the time. one where he's uh, on Rambo's body. Yeah, that one. Uh, mm. Yeah. Um, and then, look, it's not really fair to say that. There was plenty of variety, probably some new drops here as well. It's not just MAGA hats and stuff. Mm -hmm. There was, of course, merch based around the idea that Trump is still my president and Biden is not my president. And my favorite, this nice little callback to the early <laughs> Obama years with the uh, Miss Me at bumper sticker. They even got the pose right. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. You used to see that shit on billboards like 2008, 2009. It's like, miss me yet? I choked on a pretzel. We all had a good time. 
But uh, American conservatism, at, at least based on this, the biggest conservative event of the year, is firmly still all about Trump, which is kind of interesting because there's actually a lot of cognitive dissonance in this crowd. Uh, there's the Q people who believe Trump is still secretly president and will be re-inaugurated on March 4th. Uh, there's the more vanilla stop the steal people who know Trump lost, but also think the election was stolen. And then there's the normies who understand that none of it is true, but they still know which way the wind is blowing. So yeah, uh, set your sails. <laughs> uh, you, you also had official speakers openly endorsing QAnon uh, on stage and people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, they had long lines of people waiting to meet them. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, they've fully taken over. That's that's what uh, the Marjorie the, Taylor Greene signing. Uh, the line ends here. Uh, we can't keep her here all day. <laughs> yeah. That was wild. There's just a huge line of people. Do you see the picture of her lunatic. with uh, Laura Loomer? Oh God, it's like uh, that's my sleep paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. They look. All right, let's just move on. <laughs> you'll yeah. see. That. You'll find the picture. Anyway, so yeah, it's all about Trump. It's basically a sort of Trump-esque religion, which brings us now to the golden calf. I mean, the golden Trump. Yeah. Okay, technically it's chrome, I think, or I don't know, maybe bronze, but the similarity to the biblical golden calf from the book of Exodus, which still thousands of years later is shorthand for false idol, it's pretty stunning. Yeah. Uh, attendees seem to really love seeing this thing, despite it being on closer inspection. Pretty fucking weird. Like, uh, why is Trump's head extra large like a Funko Pop? Mm -hmm. And why is he wearing flip-flops and American flag shorts? but still wearing like a suit and tie on top. Because he's a limited uh, edition drop. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone at CPAC is able to buy one and they're going to flip it on the secondary market. I mean, if this guy was smart, he would sell like yeah, fun yeah, Funko exactly. sized versions of it instead yeah. of hauling this big fucking thing the, around. The, his merch stand is nothing but Trump Funkos and and, uh, and Gina Carano ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uncanceled. No, yeah. And then uh, he sells fucking Uncle Ben Rice and Aunt Jemima Syrup. And uh, uh, you can watch Paw Patrol. Can't get these anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and by the way, that's Mr. Potato Head because he has a giant potato cock. Yeah. Check his penis. And uh, that potato can suck its own dick. <laughs> you shove all of his all of his clothes up his asshole. But it's not gay. It's not gay. <laughs> it's storage. He is a cisgendered hetero potato. Mm -hmm. He's got a big old mustache like Tom Selleck. Yeah. That's the flavor saver. Yeah. He goes down on Mrs. Potato Head. <laughs> With that big French tickler on yeah. his nose, mm -hmm. and she loves it. Yeah. She is a straight woman who loves a masculine conservative man who has a potato for a body. Yeah. Anyways, back to the <laughs> back to the golden Trump. Um, I mean, there's a lot of questions here. Uh, but a reporter with Politico who was covering CPAC spoke to the artist, and um, well, they didn't really get any answers about the uh, proportions of the body or the clothes he was wearing. I but, just kind of threw it together. But uh, they did get some insight into what exactly this thing is. So let's, let's read from that report. The real star of Friday's show, a gilded, larger-than-life-size statue of Trump. And you'll never guess where it was crafted. Quote, it was made in Mexico, said artist Tommy Zegan, who traveled all the way to CPAC from Rosarito, Mexico, where he lives as an American expat on a permanent resident visa. The supply chain, Zegan spent over six months crafting the 200-pound fiberglass statue with the help of three men in Rosarito. He transported it to Tampa, Florida, where it was painted in chrome, then hauled it from there to CPAC in a U-Haul, where he managed to cart it through the conference in just a black and white Hawaiian shirt and no CPAC credential. Tickets were sold out. Oh, so he's a gate crasher. Uh, you know, this thing they said at the beginning, larger than life, but technically it is smaller than Donald Trump and lighter. Yeah. Got him. Because he is tall and huge. Yeah, he's a big boy. Mm -hmm. He's our big, wet president. No, he's not. Well, you know. Big, wet ex-president. We got a new uh, bomber in charge now. Yeah. Oh, bomber. <laughs> Uh, that article continues. If someone offered me $100,000, I'd take it, Zegan told Playbook. Well, at least he's smart. <laughs> There's more. Zegan crafted an even higher-end stainless steel version that cost his life savings, <laughs> or $50,000. He said he's aiming to sell that one for over a million dollars. But if not, he hopes to see it in a future Trump presidential library. <laughs> he's even been in touch with Trump's longtime executive assistant, Ronna Graff, about the matter. Quote, she's trying to get me in with the right people, he said. Zegan said he tried to get into Mar-a-Lago on Trump's birthday last year to present the president with the original sculpture, but he couldn't get past security. <laughs> Quote, I was not a big Trump supporter when he ran, Zegan told me. I mean, I voted for him because I wasn't going to vote for Hillary, so I voted for him, but I didn't really care for him. I used to watch The Apprentice, but I would turn it off halfway. I thought, this is stupid. All right, so um, this guy spent his entire life savings on two weirdly proportioned statues of the former president, which he built in Mexico in the hopes of selling them for a profit, possibly to Trump himself, 
despite not really liking Trump all that much. And I, dare I say I could see this in the Trump library because oh, I imagine sure. it's going to be very tacky. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sure. Uh, now, speaking of weird grifters who have continued hitching their wagons to the Trump train, we got to talk about Genki Fuji, uh, the Japanese self-described samurai futurologist. Uh, in addition to having a booth at CPAC, or Genki Fuji's company also paid $125,000 to have the following video play three times daily to attendees in between presentations. Enjoy. The Love Samurai is right back. Hello, America. Hello, American conservatives. My name is Genki Fuji. I'm a Japanese journalist and an author of more than 70 books on international relations. I run online world forecast news service. I respect President Trump and American conservatives. President Trump fought against Chinese communists in order to protect the entire free world. President Trump is a real American samurai. I want to make US Japan alliance stronger. I want to build solid friendship with real American patriots or American samurai. Let's fight together for freedom. Let's slash the cancel culture. Let's start US Japan Samurai to Samurai Alliance. Wow. That's like a Tim and Eric sketch. That, you know, that subreddit, the Tim, not Tim and Eric subreddit, yeah. is. It's debatable it's on, whether, yeah. on whether people would actually confuse it for something that Tim and Eric did. That looks like it was created by uh, their production company. It's incredible. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. Should run right at the end of it. Yeah. You only see videos like that from people who like don't have a background in uh, you know, videography and stuff. So they're coming at It's like outsider art where they're coming at it completely uh, blind. And they're just like, yeah. So I'm talking about samurais. As like a metaphor, so what if I dressed up like a samurai and swung a sword around? I don't know. That looks too on the nose. But I could be wrong. No, he's real. Uh, no, I know, I know. What I'm saying is like the editing behind the video is like someone's like, yeah, I mean, I'll I'll take any money right now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, who I mean, knows? Well, whoever edited that, they 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 nailed it. They put in the work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, maybe next year Fuji can attend CPAC in person and explain this Samurai to Samurai Alliance more in depth. I would like to know more. I was unaware that Samurais were getting canceled. I mean, I thought Samurais got canceled in, like, the 1860s, but mm. I guess I guess this, uh, this guy's the last one. Yeah. <laughs> the last Samurai, you say? Yeah. Mm. Someone yeah. called Tom Cruise. Uh, anyways, other dumb shit from CPAC included Roger Stone, who has been a free man for the past few months thanks to Trump pardoning him, dancing in front of a giant Trump-themed pickup truck while some rapper raps about how Trump actually won the election. Here you go. Who won Trump won? Who won Trump won? Watermark the baddest 45, the chosen one. You know the fans did a sweep. They was knocking at the front door. Patriots pulling up, knocking on the Capitol. Uh, Isn't that one of the old Fox News people that got uh, let go? Oh, the rapper? I yeah. don't know. I don't think so. I think he's like actually he's a full time Trump rapper, which the, is all of these hilarious. C, all of these CPAC clips, I saw the thumbnails for them as I scrolled by on Twitter. I couldn't bring myself to watch any of them. Yeah, no, it wasn't fun. No. I I feel a little crazy for uh, paying attention to this because <laughs> it's it's very strange and it's also uh, it's uh, a little depressing because it's like. Yeah, no, this, uh, we're living in Trump's world. Like, yeah. For the, sure. This is not going away. The only time I turned it on was when it was like someone was saying that Trump was going to come on, but it was like misinterpreted as later in the day or whatever. I turned it on and it was a conference, uh, a discussion on stage with a company that was a faith-based health insurance company. And what they were describing their business did sounded a hell of a lot like socialism. But I mean, all insurance companies <laughs> are sort of like socialism. They're just private socialism where everyone contributes. Yeah, and uh, they but it's collectively okay. yeah. pay for each other's medical. They said it was okay because when the money gets paid out that you've paid in, it goes to your faith-based brothers and sisters as Jesus intended. Yeah, and unlike other insurance companies, this one's for the Lord. We pray for you. Yeah. Anyways, after this weekend-long combination fever dream and super spreader event, Trump himself closed out the festival with his first public speech since leaving office. Wow. We've missed you so, sir. And uh, yeah, despite living in Florida... 
I mean, it's not super close from Mar-a-Lago to Orlando, no. but it's not super far either. I'm sure he, he flew uh, there. Yeah, he was almost an hour late. It was really awkward because all these like news networks are like, oh, and he should be out here any second now. Um, Just like so, the Strokes, uh, yeah. always an hour late for their set. Yep. Um, but yeah, when he did finally arrive, he delivered a rambling 90-minute speech that seemed to mostly contain reused bits from his rallies a few months back with not a whole lot of new material. It's like when you see a comedian after their Netflix special and you're like, I've already I've seen, seen this shit. Give yeah. me the new stuff. Uh, in fact, uh, much of the speech was basically the same sort of anti-immigration speech that he gave back in 2015, almost six years ago, when he came down to that escalator and announced his presidential run. He's got to play the hits, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you're a classic rock boomer act like this guy is, yeah. you don't want to use too much new material. The audience is like, well, I'm going to go buy another beer. No one I'm wants to hear a, a new song from ACDC. No, no. But yeah, even his entrance was recycled from last year. It was identical to his CPAC 2020 speech. He came out proud to be American. Um, he hugged and kissed the U.S. flag. Although this time he, he there was a little bit more social distance. Like cause last year, like the last couple of years, he goes up and he... Yeah, just, well, he was cautious about it. He's like... You know, I love you, but right now, Joe Biden's the president, and I don't know if I can hug you in public. Yeah, because then that would, the, hu, Trump hugging the flag in public would be an endorsement of America yeah, currently. I still it's, love you, America, but you've been, uh, you've been a little sneaking behind my back a little he bit. He should have done the thing where he, like, hugged it and gave the old fake punch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love him. I love that move. You don't see, that, that move is dying out so quickly, like... Uh, yeah. When this current generation of uncles passes, like you're not going to have the like, hey, yeah, hey, slugger, it's going to be gone. Yeah, <laughs> no more. Just don't see it. No anymore. more like the knuckles on the head. No I want to try it. once. Once I can see other people again, I'm going to pull that move. And just, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Middle while. <laughs> Oh, look, even uh, Trump's newish material, it wasn't even all that new. Now, as you might guess, he spent a lot of time claiming that he, surprise, actually won the 2020 election and that the whole thing was rigged. And he also criticized Joe Biden's various executive orders that undid Trump's own executive orders. Uh, he also made time to read out a long list of Republican elected officials that he considers to be traitors, like Liz Cheney. Yeah, hopefully no one on that list of that long list gets uh, anything bad happening to them. Yeah. Uh. Now, the TLDR of the whole thing, though, is that, no, Trump is not starting his own new political party because there's no need. He's clearly still in charge of this one. And, yeah, he's probably going to run for president again. I think one of the, like... Yeah. Because when Trump says things, he, like... He, he beats around the bush, but he's direct at the yeah. same time. It's very specific. And he definitely, he definitely like alluded to the fact that there was no need for a new party because yeah. we already have this party, meaning, yeah. meaning pro-Trump MAGA people are in control of the, of the conservative party. Yeah. And yeah. that if you're There's one no of the people need. on that list, you need to get out of the way or you're going to get voted out like that. It seemed pretty clear to me, but I don't know. No, that's it's that's exactly right. It's it's hilarious to think that like a month and a half ago, people genuinely thought that like uh, sensibility would win out in the well, Republican Party. It, like, for, no. for for Republicans that uh, are now being like, ah, shit, uh, you had a chance to do something about this. I mean, some of them did vote to impeach, but I mean, well, those people are going to get voted out of there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because it will be the party of Trump. Like, uh, I can, J Meghan McCain's head is going to explode. She's going to be like, what the. The party belongs to Trump. How did this happen? Yeah. Meanwhile, she should start her own party. That'd be hilarious. The Arizona Princess Party. Yeah. And we are firing Dr. Fauci because I don't know when I'm getting my vaccine. Me, Megan McCain, mm -hmm. co-host of The View. Where's my vaccine, Dr. Fauci? Anyways, yeah, he's. It he sounds like he's gonna run for president again. Uh, here's some quotes. Uh, who knows? I may even decide to beat them for a third time. <laughs> uh, elsewhere in the speech, he said. With your help, we will take back the House, we will win the Senate, and then a Republican president will make a triumphant return to the White House. And I wonder who that will be. I wonder who that will be. Who, who, who will that be? I wonder. <laughs> so yeah, he, he's, def he's definitely gonna fucking do it. Trump the fucking uh, poet, man. He's, yeah. I miss these bangers. He, like, he did have a new energy to him, because he did seem pretty worn out oh. by the end there. So he's had, like... Almost two months to decompress down in Mar-a-Lago on his old stomping grounds. He seems more alive. The, he's got the good drugs again. Uh, yeah. He's been golfing probably every day. Yeah. But, but no one cares anymore. Yeah. That's the best part. I don't care if Trump golfs anymore. I mean, it's, I, 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 to be fair, I didn't care when he golfed during his presidency because yeah, it meant he was doing something outside of ruining things. Also, it's not 
I, I don't care when any president calls. It's not really that big of a deal. Although I will say, <laughs> I did think it was great when uh, when Bernie was running and he was like, and I won't play golf because I don't play. Yeah. I, I don't like the sport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was refreshing. Yeah. Bernie just jogs. Yeah. And he runs pretty fucking fast for an old man. He was, yeah. uh, he had a, uh, this is completely off topic. Bernie had like multiple records in, uh, what was it? Like, he's from Queens or the Bronx or whatever. Like the, the district of NYC, like the high school, uh, he he had a bunch of like long distance running records at the time, mm-hmm. fast as fuck. Anyways, so yeah, we will probably be hearing about the official uh, Trump twenty twenty four run for president sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. I mean, why let this post election momentum go to waste? It's why waste time? Why why give Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley and uh, Rand Paul enough time to like stake their claim on it when clearly. Trump's got the lead, and they did, like, straw polls at the convention, both officially and through journalists, and it's like, yeah, everyone there's just like, yeah, no, Trump should, should run This again. is like asking someone if they like the Avengers at Comic-Con. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so would you want another Avengers movie, or... Um, oh, we did a straw poll at Comic-Con, it turns out people want more Marvel movies. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, like, look, we're in for a long four years for a lot of reasons, because uh, Trump never went away, and we've also got fucking... Uh, uh, the current guy's not doing so great either. He's a... B- uh, <laughs> The, d- 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 Joe Biden. Look, guys, I can't. Sir, a- I c- we can't afford to pay you anyway. I'm gonna send a couple of missiles over to, over to. But the cell, the Senate parliamentarian said we couldn't do it. Parliamentarian said Sh- no. Sure, Kamala Harris could override that literally by just saying I'm overriding it. Uh, but oh gosh, wouldn't it be great if we could get bipartisan support? Fuck these. <laughs> fuck people. off. Yeah. Um, yeah, tr- I think Trump's got a pretty decent shot at getting his old job back. Hey, you know what? Uh, We're going to give him that $15. Yeah, he will. And they, they will. would support it. It would work. And I mean, Republicans would support it. It's the same shit. Currently, everyone in America has gotten more COVID relief money from Donald Trump than Joe Biden. And that's probably going to remain the case for the next four years, which <laughs> and the COVID is COVID fucking relief insane. Bill, the COVID relief bill is like, yeah, they tr- Trump's passed no problem. This one's like, well, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of fat in this Shut thing. We can Shut the turn. fuck up. Give people money. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's great. And, and like also the libs, the libs, man, the fucking libs. CPAC full of alarming statements from various speakers and attendees, like a lot to work off of here. If you want to like plan. direct words. Yeah. And uh, all these fucking hashtag resistance libs who uh, were, you know, obsessed with the Mueller thing and obsessed with the Russiagate stuff. All they could focus on was the fact that the shape of the stage vaguely resembled a really obscure, like, runic symbol associated with the Nazis that no one knew this fucking symbol. Like, unless you were a fucking scholar of the SS, you've never seen this before in your life. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, they're they're hiding Nazi symbols in the stage. No, they're fucking not. It's a coincidence. They're saying saying shit on stage that's reprehensible. Even if this was intentional, like, why are you focusing on this and not all the shit that's actually happening? (laughs) You fucking idiot. God Ugh. damn it. So having said that, it might actually be intentional. I mean, there's definitely maybe. someone who's like, I probably slipped this by. But still, you, you're focusing on like subtle hints and trying to expose that to people who you like, look, here's some proof. And people are like, okay, okay, yeah, I mean, maybe. But all you have to do is play clips of what people are saying. Yeah. They're saying exactly what they mean, and it's and it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. So uh I don't uh, know. Maybe oh we shit, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, so yeah, that's uh, just an all CPAC episode. We got headlines, though. Not- have you seen all the tweets of people that are, like, uh, uh, making sense of fucking Biden's uh, missile strike? Oh, yeah. No, the, the Biden defense squad is out in full force. They're like, yeah, just... And the Cuomo defense squad. Oh, oh my, God. my God. It's, yeah, it's fucked up. Marron. Cuomo has got to go. <laughs> Cuomo has got I to go. I hope New York has learned a very important lesson about letting Italians have power. <laughs> <laughs> no Italian should ever be in charge of anything more important than, like, I don't know, a pizzeria, maybe. The government? Are you insane? <laughs> An entire state? This is what you get. It's got to be awkward <laughs> to watch his brother on CNN now. Is he, like, just completely banned from reporting on him at all? Yeah, which should have been the case from the beginning. <laughs> I know. Well, I know they stopped him from interviewing him, but I didn't yeah. know if they were like, hey, can you just not mention anything about your brother? It's a big oof. <laughs> Anyways, New York, uh, yeah, open up theaters. Anyway, next story. Yeah. Nothing to do with my brother. 
It's a hell of a time. Anyways, he he hid the deaths of thousands. Yeah, it's it's not good. And he also sexually harassed multiple people. That's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, the, it's, the, the stuff he's that's coming out person. recently is very crazy. And all the like transcripts and like he he thinks he's a fucking mafia boss. He is a scary man who yeah. uses like subtle threats to get even before to the things. most recent stuff. He was threatening all the journalists who were going to like expose the death numbers. Yeah, like, I saw literally, a, like your career is going to be over. I saw a video today from a couple years back where uh, he like he was at some lunch and he pulled over this female reporter and he's like, eat the sausage. And he had one of his aides bring her a plate of like, it's like, I guess, sort of a German style sausage meal. He's like, you're going to eat the whole thing. Come sit down next to me. You're going to eat that sausage. It was fucking, it's extremely weird. Very creepy. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, before we get into the headlines half of this show, uh, this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Does looking at your current cold weather wardrobe options give you a chill? It's time to ditch that old sweater and upgrade that jacket. A Stitch Fix personal stylist can help you pick new pieces that are timeless. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Each piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included in your box. There's no subscription required. Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep, and there are no hidden fees ever. Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and kids. They ship all over the U.S. and the U.K. as well. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash weird. And this episode is also sponsored by Bespoke Post. The curators at Bespoke Post have done it again this winter with an all-new lineup of essential Box of Awesome collections for guys guaranteed to upgrade your life. Whether it's showcase pieces to level up your indoor hosting skills or cozy threads for those blustery days, Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. Uh, Some of their new collections that caught my eye include this cocktail smoking kit for making smoked cocktails, Mm. uh, this shoe polish kit for keeping your dress shoes looking brand new, and this very nice skincare bundle for men. Mm. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code WEIRD at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD for 20% off your first box. All right, now into the headlines with the first one here is... Gender reveal device explosion kills father-to-be. God! It's horrible. Damn it, but yeah. like, can we fucking It's every stop? week! Every single week this happens. It's an epidemic. Yes. It's the real pandemic is um, men thinking that they need to build literal bombs to announce the gender. It's men going out of their way. Yeah. To build bombs and blow themselves up. I don't know if they've revealed exactly how this guy died, but from the sound of it, (laughs) it sounds like he was building a literal bomb. Some sort of pipe-like device with... uh, explosive material inside of it. He built a fucking pipe bomb and it blew up on him. Like, this is this is a problem you're only supposed to have if you're in a terror cell, not a father-to-be. Come on. And again, we mention this every time, which is every week, but now that kid has to grow up with the guilt yeah. of their existence. Mom, why don't killing... I have a dad? Well, well, he built a pipe bomb to celebrate your birth. Yeah, he was so excited about you showing up that he blew himself up mm-hmm. in a essentially a suicide bombing. So, um, he yeah. was also very upset that your potato toys weren't going to have Yeah, dicks. he was so piping mad mm-hmm. about Mr. Potato Head coming out as uh, non binary or some shit that he built a bomb. And um, you don't have a dad anymore. Yeah. Um, stop doing this, please. Yeah, please. please. It's not, it's not, you should, you should want to be alive. So, just get like a pink or blue cake, I guess, if you care that much. Yeah. Who, yeah. Pop like, some balloons. No, that's what, like, uh, you slice into the cake and it has the color in the yeah. ca- in the cake filling. But then you're not going to go viral. Imagine how viral you go with your fucking uh, tactical, the tactical gender reveal nuke. I'm going to let you know something. No one cares. In fact, people hold it against you. Yeah, at this point, people are like, really? 
Hmm. Hmm. You choose to boast? Yes. <laughs> anyway, next headline. This 105-year-old beat COVID. She credits gin-soaked raisins. This is... And all these fucking old people... They always have some weird routine. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, the reason why is because every morning I would wake up and I would rub my own piss all over my lips. <laughs> yeah. And um, that's... people laughed at me, but they're all dead now. And that's 100% the reason why I'm still here. And it's not because of any other reason. It's not because of I science, mean, medicine, yeah, doctors. Yeah, just ge genetics and uh, yeah. chance. Yeah, they all have like... It's, well, I, woke up every, I wake up every morning and then uh, throughout the day I smoke one cigarette and drink yeah. three Miller Lights and I'm going to live to be 120. Uh, drink, uh, you know, uh, a saucer of heavy cream and yeah. a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil, yeah. You know, uh, good to go. Yeah, this lady, she... For I think whole... it's great that she survived. And well, this one is especially unique, though. Like, gin-soaked raisins? I've never heard of this in my life. But she she describes it. She's like, you get a you get a jar, you fill it with raisins, the golden ones, you <laughs> fill it with gin, you wait exactly nine days, and then mm -hmm. after that, every day, you eat exactly nine gin-soaked raisins. You'll live forever. Why nine? I don't know. I've never heard of it. Like, I, I do kind of wonder what it tastes like. I like gin and I like raisins. I love raisins. Yeah, raisins are great. Yeah. We Not, should all be eating more raisins. Don't be putting raisins in that uh, potato salad, though. They do have the uh, they have those sour raisins now, but they're so expensive. Yeah, those are good, though. They are very they're good. very good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it. Uh, put those in gin, I guess. But oh, look, sure. she survived because of uh, a multitude of reasons, none of which, I assure you, have anything to do with gin-soaked raisins. Mm -hmm. But there's only one way to find out. Eight, nine gin-soaked raisins every day. For the rest of your life. Sir, you've got diabetes and a severe cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm still here. No COVID. No. It's called nerd immunity. Wearing glasses may protect against COVID-19, study finds. Yeah, it's, it's like wearing a, a shield. Yeah, that's, that's basically what it comes down to. They're just like, yeah, you get... If someone spits or whatever and... You don't glasses. have glasses, it gets in your eyes, and it might go into your nasal cavity, but if you have glasses, you're good. And, yeah, makes sense. I I can say just based on random times in the past that I've done stuff with power tools, uh, and, like, I would have lost well, an eye by now. You're supposed to wear safety glasses. Yeah, you are. But I don't have safety glasses. I just have my normal glasses. Also, wear some gloves when you do it. You know, it might feel silly the first couple times to wear gloves while you're doing handyman things, but uh, guess what? If you don't... You cut yourself. I've done it before. Yeah. You smash your hands. It hurts. Yeah. Get splinters. Mm -hmm. Safety first. It's not just for nerds anymore. That's right. Mm -hmm. Arizona man accused of faking own kidnapping to evade work. I mean, he put in the effort. He did. You know what, son? You can you can have the day off. You could have just called and said you had diarrhea. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know about Arizona. They pff, might be one of those states where they can just fire you for... Uh, any reason at all, but yeah. this guy did not want to go down to work at the tire store, so he uh, tied himself up and, like, just sat down somewhere, waited for the cops to come. He's like, yeah, I was kidnapped, and they, they dumped me out here, so uh, can How? you call my boss and tell him that's why I'm not at work? Like, imagine, he, like, that he hated his job so much that he'd rather sit on a curb and do nothing and yeah. act like he was kidnapped. Yeah, and uh, his story didn't, you know, there's cameras everywhere now, so... Story didn't really go too far. It's just like, looks like you just sort of came and sat down here on your own. And none of the things you said happened actually happened. Does he still have his job? I don't think he has his job, and I think he's in trouble with the law now. Oh, well, oh well. It's unlike in the Ukraine, if you file police reports here that are fake, you get in trouble. The Ukraine, they can't do anything. The Ukraine, you're just like, hey. Oh, you got us. I killed someone. Can you come plow my driveway? Ah, oh, shit. You didn't kill anyone, did you? He knows the secret. Yep. We got to do it now. I hope I make it. Seven-year-old Alabama girl selling lemonade to fund her brain surgeries. Inspiring. Upworthy. Wow. This... We live in hell. Yeah, we are a failed state in yeah. a lot of ways. This is, uh, uh, I, I don't know, call me crazy, but I happen to believe that if a literal fucking child needs brain surgery, uh, <laughs> she shouldn't have to like do literal child labor to pay for it. If that lady can get Gorilla Glue out of her hair, surely this girl can get brain surgery. Yeah, she needs it. She has... Uh, like birth defects in her brain that caused her to have serious seizures. The worst was, uh, I can't remember which outlet it was. It was probably all of them because they all use the same script. But it was like, life handed her lemons. And it's like, <sighs> life handed her fucking abnormalities in her brain. That's not lemons. Well, I mean, uh, uh, metaphorical lemons. Uh, 
Literally, fuck off. Yeah, this is it. Every every couple of weeks, you see a story like this. Like, wow, this uh, wow, this kid was about to go to UCLA and uh, instead decided to use his tuition money to pay for his dad to get a fucking like heart surgery so he doesn't die. Wow, what a what a guy. No, no, no one should have to do any of this shit. This girl should be able to just go get her fucking brain surgery. She's a child. Come on. Yeah. Fucking country, man. Nutritionist says pizza is better for breakfast than most cereals. Unless you eat the cereal that's a sponsor um, of this channel. Yeah, unless you eat Magic Spoon, which uh, we've talked about them. But they're not sponsoring this episode. So <laughs> they did recently send both of us uh, some, new, so much some new samples for uh, future ad reads. And they sent each of us like 15 boxes of cereal. It's a lot. Got plenty of cereal. It's, it's really good. But anyway, it's yeah. Good I actually did eat pizza for breakfast this morning. I had pizza. Well, I didn't have it for breakfast. I had it, I had it for lunch. But uh, I, I had feel it for dinner, I, and then I just heated it up in the morning. Either way, I feel terrible now. Well, luckily, I did, it, this wasn't Domino's that I ate. It was from a local, like pretty authentic, like high quality pizza place. A uh, lot, lot more tomato than cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's still, still not something you want to eat all the time. No, I had I. I guess I haven't had, like, a lot of uh, dairy in a while. Like, I'll have, like, cheese on some stuff every once in a while. Yeah. Did not feel good after. Yeah, you get... Uh, it's cheese overload. It's unnatural. It's all because of that damn History Channel show, The Foods That Made America. Have you seen that? No. If you want to see something ridiculous, okay? Like, the information, it's fun to hear mm-hmm. about, like, people starting businesses. Like, oh, you want to hear the backstory of Domino's? Okay. Um, it, it is the most insane, over-the-top, dramatized shit like they're like it's like and then the Pizza Hut guys came over to Domino's and offered to buy him out and like they handed him and he's like oh my god all my problems could be solved nope i can't do it he's like reenactment I'm, yeah like i'm going to keep going and i'm going to keep spreading this beautiful pizza across this beautiful country and the pizza Hut guys are like god damn it i respect you but you got to know one thing We'll never stop coming for you. Like that's <laughs> it's it's that, but in every scene about oh, every food. That sounds fucking awesome. Like there's like the Reese cup guy, like in his kitchen, like fucking like a scientist making yeah. Reese cups, and like Hershey's comes in and like basically beats him with a fucking briefcase. <laughs> you think you could sell candy in my town? <laughs> that's exactly what it's like. Yeah, that's it's great. insane. I did recently learn that uh, the guy who started the Welch's Candy Company uh, yeah. also started the John Birch Society, which is this. Like, John Burst Society makes CPAC look, like, sane. Well, it's like the celestial seasonings, people. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever learn about your heroes. Yeah. They, is, is there an episode about the Kellogg's guy? And, oh, yeah. And how no. he made uh, uh, his, ser- his so cereal. So people would stop masturbating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made his cereal bland and uh, paper-like. It too. turns out that every CEO, probably they're to this day, freaks. they're all terrible. But especially back then, yeah. we're all essentially evil people. Yeah. Except, well, so Hershey was kind of like, I think for a bit, okay, he literally, like, gave his employees houses to live in and oh, stuff. That's nice. It was like a little utopia up there in Hershey, yeah. Pennsylvania. Um, but, uh, I, I look, he he's probably an asshole, too. He did shake down the Reese's guy. Yeah. They fired the Reese's guy, and then, then he starts making his cups, and they're like, oh, what have we done? <laughs> Buy him out, boys. <laughs> and they beat the shit out of him. Wow. Yeah, the history of food. It's a it's a funny show. You take it for granted, but people gave their lives. <laughs> <laughs> it's the McDonald's one's wild too. We all know the McDonald's story. Oh yeah, Ray, Ray Kroc. Ray He's guy. a real piece of shit. Ah, uh, next headline: A man called his ex a moron by text while storming the Capitol. She turned him in. I want to see the text because in my mind uh, it, it reads like. You hey, said I'd never make it. You fucking idiot. You look where I am now, you moron. Yeah, you didn't think, well, you thought I wasn't a man enough for you. Well, here's a bunch of video of me breaking the law, you fucking idiot. You what think, you a, ma- <laughs> you think a, a pussy would, wouldn't do this? <laughs> I'm pissing all over someone's desk. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's so funny, all these people just owning themselves constantly. Because he literally, he his, his ex-girlfriend didn't agree that uh, the election was stolen and uh, had a problem with him doing that. He's like, well, you, if you think it's stupid, well, look at me. Here I am breaking into the Capitol. Yeah. You fucking idiot. Would a loser do this? I, I bet <laughs> you feel real stupid now. And she just immediately forwards all yeah. this to the FBI. Would a loser do this? And it's him, like, shitting on someone's death. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you're really missing out. You think If you think I'm going to take you back after this, <laughs> you're dead wrong. Miss me yet? <laughs> 
And in other capital uh, riot headlines, Atlantic City man charged in capital attack boasted of urinating in Pelosi's office, feds say. Woo! And again, He's like uh, uh, the uh, uh, Calvin. <laughs> That's on the desk. And this guy is another one that he's currently being uh, prosecuted. And it's all, all the evidence is just from his Facebook. And this is in, like, someone replied, like, uh, so did you go in Pelosi's office? He's like, pissed on her desk. You sh- bitch your ass I did. I fucking pissed in it. Fucking urinated all over Nancy Pelosi's office. Idiots. And just now it's in the public record. It's great. I love this shit. We should have a capital siege, like, every couple <laughs> weeks. Like, I, at this point, I think they're probably... The, it's like when the cops do, like, the, you've won a free boat. Yeah. And all the criminals show up. They should. I'm. They're, they're saying there might be another one uh, this week. Jesus Christ. The March, oh, the QAnon the thing? The March 4th is the real, like, inauguration day. And that's it's just going to be, like, the... the, the, the doomsday people where like every year there's like a day and they're like yeah. oh we must have read the tea leaves wrong yeah we used the aztec uh, compass the, the wrong way this time yeah you would have you would have hoped that the QAnon shit would have fallen apart after the capital riot but they and now they have this march 4th thing but and you would think after nothing happens on march 4th they'll realize they've been conned this whole time but no no there's just gonna the, the deadline's just gonna keep getting pushed back forever yes when trump dies they're not gonna believe that he's actually dead no. No. They're going to think he's up in a spaceship and he comes along with the hale Bob comet every 74 years. No, they're going to think some like random to... dude is actually Trump and he's like in hiding just like with uh, yeah. JFK Jr. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Show yourself, Mr. Trump. The guy Trump. looks nothing like JFK Jr. Border agent sees 277 pounds of banned bologna. It's bologna is banned in America. It's yeah. too good. Mm-hmm. We don't want to let Americans get their hands on it, though. Yeah. Develop a taste for Give it. Give me some of that illegal bologna. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sandwich is dangerous. Yeah, I guess it uses like pork or something. You're not allowed to import pork products from outside of the country or some shit. Sounds like socialism to me. You know, Mr. Trump. Sounds like communism, socialism. Mr. Uh, Trump, what are you going to do that. anything about this banned bologna? <laughs> Been eating this fucking garbage ass turkey bologna. Fucking sucks ass. To America, they don't even let you put the little chunks of fat that you can see in the slices. It's just one. Was One it, solid color. Was it an urban legend that you could toss bologna on someone's car and it would melt the paint? I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure it was an urban legend. I don't know if it was true or not. Mm. But, uh, yeah, lunch meats are interesting. When I was in high school, the prank was uh, going down to the Walmart and buying some deer piss and putting it in people's cars. Is that to attract deer or... It's to mix, to in, with the amount, uh, mix in with the environment so the deer doesn't know you're there hunting it. Oh. But, yeah... yeah p- p- People would just dump it in each other's car as a goof. And we have a little And it would take weeks, weeks to get the smell out. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. They just sell it on the shelves. You can go buy deer piss right now. Yeah, I think I'm good. Okay. And final headline. Plastic surgeon turns up for Zoom court hearing while in the middle of operating on a patient. <laughs> hey, where are you guys? No, I'm good. I, yeah, I can multitask. I'm just pulling some Gorilla Glue out of someone's hair. It's fine. He, did I, you see someone else did it for attention this time? No. Yeah, this guy, he, all he was going to court for was for a traffic violation. And he decided, to, now he might lose his medical license. Sure, he's at least being investigated. Was he like, oh, uh, this is why I couldn't be, uh, obviously this is not important enough. I'm currently operating on someone. I don't know. I don't know what, I mean, he might have just, he might have forgotten that he was scheduled for this. He might have <laughs> double booked himself. Opens the laptop with his foot. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I got my hands doing this and uh, you can see me. And I can do this blind. Yeah. With my eyes closed. He, uh, it's it's strange, but yeah, the, the judge was like, "Yeah, no, we're gonna reschedule this. Uh, you 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 work, you're operating on a patient, you're doing surgery, so we're not gonna do the the hearing for your traffic stuff. We're gonna let you operate, so your patient is safe, scot free. <laughs> no, um, you have to come back. <laughs> no, I'm booked. Can't do it. I'm double, operating on people. Double jeopardy. Yeah, can't be convicted of the same." Uh, traffic violation. Sure. If uh, you've already shown up to court once. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. All right. That's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed it. Please check out our other episodes over here. Uh, if you haven't seen them yet, just go give them a watch. Why yeah. not? Give them a spin. Yeah. Hey, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you uh, for another week full of pure calamity. Bye.